What up, everybody? You're now tuned into the true definition of a sports fanatic. I'm your host, Brandon Lampley. Hey, got another sports show today. I know I haven't done a sports show in about a week and a half or so. Hey, Wednesday, we're going to recap the draft. Me and Mr. Reed, who covers the Jaguars for the Florida Times Union. But today, I got a special guest today. Mr. Sullivan, introduce yourself to the people. Yes, sir. Uh, Coach Kevin Sullivan. Um, been around a while in this area and uh, looking forward to talking a little ball and talking a little life today. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate you so much. Um, so like you said, you've been around for a very, very long time. I had only heard about you growing up. You know, they coach Sully. That's all you hear is coach Sully, you know, and, you know, you just hear stories that never had officially met you before. And, you know, my um, of course, my boss, my Mr. Johnny Mike, you know, love that man to death. You know, he's in the short period of time I've known. He taught me so much. He got me connected with you. And um, he was telling me, say, man, you got to get Coach Sullivan on the show, man. He got the stories for days. He's going to have you laughing. Very inspirational, man. So you got to get him on. So thank you so much for joining me. Oh, yeah. I appreciate you having me on. Look forward to it. Yes, sir. So how did you get your start in football um, as far as coaching? Well, coaching, I don't know. I always I, I always attribute to um, – I had a teacher in um, probably my junior year in high school, uh, English teacher. And uh, we were in class one day, and you know how they start talking to you about life and what you're going to do and, and that kind of stuff. And, and, and I told her, I said, you know, I think I want to teach and coach. And she looked dead at me, and she said, you know what? You'll be good at that. And I think that's mm -hmm. probably the most inspirational thing that uh, uh, anybody had said to me. Uh, and uh, when she told me I'd be good at it, I think I just sort of went with it. And that, that's sort of been where I've gone with it from there. Uh, just a little bit of inspirational words and encouragement from somebody that I respected. And uh, sort of got me going and moving forward. And then, uh, you know, my coaches that influenced me growing up, uh, my high school coach and uh, a couple of my mentors and stuff who have been really good for me. Okay. Yeah, man, that's, um, it, it's like with, with me, um, talking to, uh, Eric Sampson one day, we worked, um, at, a, um, at a job together and, you know, just talking football. And he was like, have you ever, um, uh, talk, uh, coach football before and see, uh, Rocky Owens say coach Sully. Okay. You got, Hey, you got people who know you in here already, man. Yeah, man. We got coach Sullivan. though, man. Y'all tune in. Um, he was like, he's like, man, um, uh, uh, Rocky say you the goat, man. Hey, hey, Coach Sully the goat. Oh, appreciate that, Rocky. <laughs> um, he was like, he's like, man, you talk football. He said, man, I think you'll be a good coach. I said, man, I've never coached football a day in my life. I said I played a little in high school, but you know, I knew playing wasn't for me, so I was gonna contribute another way. So media was it. He said, but he said, man, he said I think you can definitely coach. You know, and I did it for three years. I loved it. It's just that. It didn't pay enough money, and I'm still trying to establish myself. <laughs> That's the yeah. issue. I, I, we were talking about that the other day, and I said it pays enough money when you when you're in it about 30 years, like when I got into it, like that. I tell everybody right now, my first job teaching and coaching, I made twelve thousand dollars. Man, I was rolling in that thing back in the day. Now, so <laughs> uh, you know, so but uh, yeah, it, it, there's a lot of positive things as you stay in it, even as long as I've been in it, or you've been in it two or three years, because you got a chance to influence people, and that's the best part about it. Yeah, that that's what I miss the most. Um, the connection, the connection I've made, you know, with other coaches and of course with players. Um, it, it's it's crazy. Those three years that I spent coaching, I still have uh, players who see me and they. You know, they 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 what they listen to my podcast. They like it. They they say they're so proud of me. It's like, like having the kid tell you, you coach say, coach man, I'm proud of you. I love your podcast. You know, keep going, man. This that's that's second to none. That feeling knowing you made an impact in their lives, man. I think is that, that's my favorite part of the game. Yeah, well, that, you know, that's why most of most of us get into it. You know, we're trying to better better the kids' lives, better the community. You know, yeah, maybe win a few games along the way, but uh, it's more, it's so much bigger than that as you get, as you, when I first started, you know, when anybody first starts, man, you want to win, you want to this, and then, da, 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 and then as you get going and get through and see the impact and the lives that are changing and the different things going on, it really makes, uh, it really makes it worthwhile. Yeah. Yes, it does. It's, it's very, very rewarding, you know, at the end of the day, you know, and, it happens and then yeah, and you have to I realize too, man, so many young young kids, especially young men, regardless of race, you know, a yeah. lot of them don't have father figures, you know, in the home. So as a coach, you spend probably more time with them 
than you know uh pretty much any males in their lives especially that four year period where they're playing football and you take on that role whether you want to or not you know yeah and, and the thing is back then now uh everybody tries to put everything out what they're doing with their kids oh we're going to this camp or we're going there back in the day we didn't have any of that we we just did it we'd load them up in the van i had a i had an astro van and I'd load up seven, eight of them. We'd ride over to Gainesville for camp one day. And the next day we'd come back. Two days later, we'd be heading to Florida State. You know, we didn't put all that out. We just did what we thought was in the best interest for our kids to get their name and recognition out there and get our program out there and help us to help, help them to see the picture of the big world. You know, because so many of our kids in this area, they're just tied into the Jacksonville area. Or maybe they got family up in Kingsland or down in St. Augustine. They never get out to the big picture. And some of the greatest things we did when we first got here at Jackson in 1998 was get those kids out on college campuses and to see the big world out there and, and, and get them to achieve and post some goals and do some neat things. So yeah. that's what it's always been about. That's what it's always about. See, we got some comments. Charlton Sinclair say you coach some great running backs. Oh man. Yeah. We're going to talk about some of those <laughs> running backs, man. And hey, one of my favorite Leon Washington, man. I love Leon. It's yeah. His, Leon. Uh, Leon was easy to Leon was easy to uh, the, to coach. You know, we just made yeah. sure he got to the got on the bus on time and just got off the mm. bus. He was okay, and uh, yeah, he was easy. But man, we've had some good ones. I I sat in the office the other day. We got a, brought a bunch of the old pictures out. They're in the weight room now from uh, some of the years they call it the Sully years here. And mm. um, yeah, we went through with a couple of the kids. I'd be like, oh man, that kid could go. He had the best stop start. You know, Troy Pollard, George Stripling, who's who's actually coaching here now. Uh, you know, Rackley, his brother, JJ, uh, Rainier, Curtis Blackman. I mean, you know, we go on and on and on. Thaddeus Hampton started it all, Sidney Mofford. You know, it's it was a good run there, everything. Everybody talked about us uh, uh, running the ball all the time, but uh, we, we had some pretty decent group of kids running through. It was a lot of fun. Looking back, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I could imagine what it was like, man. But hey, you got to tell me, what what was it like working with Johnny Mike? Because I'll tell you this right now, working with him five days a week, man, it's never a dull moment in the office. Well, Johnny Mike, <laughs> Johnny Mike and I, we we had a good time. Like Johnny was like my right hand for a long time, so he was sort of the connection in the community, and we were just fortunate enough because. When I got here, you know, they, they'd only won eight games in the 90s. And we got here in 98. So, of course, I'm going through the staff. And uh, they 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 didn't want me to keep anybody on staff because they thought mm -hmm. it was so dysfunctional. And so, But I, I kept Johnny Mike around because I needed that community guy. And, uh, you know, he, he, he was so funny. We'd be, don't tell him this, but I'm going to tell you guys this. But on Saturday morning meetings, we'd be watching film and going through film. And all of a sudden he'd be over there snoring and he'd be snoring. <laughs> Johnny, wake up. He goes, yeah, this team ain't no good. These guys suck. They ain't no good. Yeah. <laughs> That's him. <laughs> so we laughed about that and everything. And, uh, but no, Johnny, man, we, we, we had a lot of good times and, uh, uh, he did a lot of good for our community and for our kids being a Jackson grad. And uh, like mm -hmm. I said, he helped me with the alumni once we really started going in the early years, which were really the fun years because nobody ever expected us to win or do anything. You know, the hell, we got another guy there higher and they're going to lose a bunch of games. And then when we started winning, everybody started coming out of the woodwork, getting on. I, it, it, It's just funny, man. It's just been a – it was just a fun team. It was a good situation to be in, and I was just fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. Oh, man, that's what's up. See, Harrison Prime said, Coach Sullivan, Jackson's finest. Yes, sir. Said, uh, Danny Bell. Danny Bell. That's another one. Yeah, Danny Bell uh, from over there from Sweetwater. Danny, we used to call him Sweetwater Slim. That's what mm -hmm. we called Danny. Danny was a good player, man, really good player. He started on them early years as a sophomore at more at strong safety, and then we had moved him over to offense as years go on. But, you know, there wasn't a – Danny didn't like class very often, so we had to always yes. stay on Danny. He, he, he'd miss a <laughs> class in a heartbeat. He'd, be, he'd have four periods in the gym if he could. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. So um, I've seen um, um, you were the very first coach uh, for Atlantic Coast, correct? Yes. So yes. what was that like? You, you had to build a program from the ground up. You had nothing to start on. You had no returning players. What was that like? 
Well, it was actually, you know, we had gone into, into that, um, we had gone into that job thinking that we could sort of put our stamp on everything and sort of make, uh, uh, create our own traditions and, you know, you, everything's new and everybody's not getting this old thing and you're not comparing yourself to any team. And, uh, so we sort of preached that, uh, I don't know if you know, on the El, El, El Pluribus Nuna, which it says on, on yeah. the dollar bill at, at a many one, <laughs> that was sort yeah. of like our motto. Cause we ended up like seven, eight schools coming together. And, uh, you know, we had some kids that were at some of the other schools that weren't playing came to us. <laughs> and then we had some kids that were running from things that other schools came to play for us. So it was, uh, that first year we knew everybody was coming back. And we weren't really playing a big time varsity schedule. You know, we added up like some Sandalwoods and we played University of Christian. And then we played a couple smaller schools. Um, and we knew it was a really a good year to build, put our program in together. But man, it's it's fun, but it is a long first year. That I can tell you, because you're trying to implement your program and your thing where, you know, here we'd been here 11 or 12 years. And so everything the next year was automatic pilot. And as coaches, I thought we, we uh, it, it helped us a little bit because we could go back to some fundamental things that we had taken for granted over the years uh, that we knew. And uh, I thought it made us better coaches going there too. Oh yeah, definitely. So you talk about the grind, man. That's one thing I learned very early coaching because, you know, I coached at uh, Parker first and then Sandalwood, you know, coach um, was, you know, head coach in JV. And then um, Sandra would assist the JV assist on. And of course, assist um, on defense with the uh, varsity. Right. But it's an absolute grind. Um, the hours you put in versus, you know, just the monetary pay. But, you know, you're not doing it for pay. You find it out very quickly. Like, OK, nobody's out here to get paid because right. you're not getting paid that much. So you're out here for the love of the game. But even with you loving it, even it being your passion and your dream, it can grind you. Um, into a pulp man if you're not careful oh yeah without a doubt it was a, it was always a um always a grind and you got to remember now back in the day it was two a days in uh in the beginning of august so yes it was, it was it was 15 hour days basically for two weeks almost and usually the second week we had to go to teachers meeting in the mornings and and that but people people don't understand that so you know the first week was all football it was two a days grind. And then the second week it was, it was still grinding, but then we're going to school and we're not practicing until three. So we're going three to five breaking and going seven to nine and turning around being back in the school building at seven in the morning for that second week. So the second week was the grind. And we got to that Friday. That was always a, a little tip top or what we called the tip top Friday where we, we, the staff would go out and we'd go have a couple of drinks on that after that second week on Friday, just to unwind a little bit. And then school would start. And then once school started, of course, game week started. And then, it, then you're into game week mold and, uh, and that. So, but yeah, back in those, those two a days, I don't know if we'd have any football with the kids these days, if we had two a days, we'd have about 25 kids on the team. Oh, you, too. You not only 25 kids, you'd have about two, three coaches out there at <laughs> max, man. Cause I, I came in, I didn't have to deal with two a days as a coach and I could just imagine what that was like. You know, I thank, thankfully coach, uh, my first head coach, uh, Tommy Balaam. And of course, uh, my other head coach, uh, Adam Geis, Thank goodness that they, you know, that is the program that they want to run at that time, man. Because I do being out there. One we'll thing about the one thing about it is the heat. Right. I don't think people really understand the heat. Like you, I had to mentally train myself to say, "Hey, you're going to be in the sun. It is what it is. You got to get used to it, and it's not going anywhere." And after a while, after probably about a couple of weeks or so, you kind of start to get used to it. But one part I never got used to was when it rained for about thirty minutes. Stop, and then the sun came back out, and yeah. we had to continue practicing. The Those were awful days. No, yeah, that's probably man. the worst thing. When it's raining, when you're out there, you're like, "Oh my God, is this the greatest thing ever?" And then all of a sudden, yeah. boom, it's gone, and it's a steam bath, and you're steam. like, "Steam!" Everybody, uh, man, I tell you what. Those those were some fun times. So we used to go seven thirty to ten in the morning, and then break, and then we'd go one to three thirty, and then we were done during our two days. So we would try to do all our heavy stuff in the morning, and then the afternoon was more two hour teaching. It was hot. We might only be in shells, not as much hitting a lot more individual, a little bit teaching. But the morning practice was a was a uh, uh, we, we we'd be flying around hitting some people then. So it was a good time in the morning. 
Oh yeah, 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 man. It's uh, it's it's always um good to get up. I I never had an issue getting up early to get stuff out of the way. Like anytime they say early practice anything, I'm the one of the first people there. Right. Because I know that the sun is not going to be too hot. We're going to get a lot of cooperation from the kids. There's not going to be nobody talking about water and crying and all of that. They want to get in and they want to get out, you know. But um, once we hit that afternoon and oh, my goodness, man, the excuses. That One thing that I loved about kids is the excuses that they would come up with, whether they're late, whether they didn't show up to practice, um, whether they missed an assignment um whether they gotten in trouble in school the excuses that they came up with is just i mean just uh, just legendary excuses oh yeah yeah we used to oh it's it's football season how many grandmothers are dying this season <laughs> oh <laughs> was, man we had one guy we had one kid we taught he had three grandmothers die in the in, the, in the october uh september and october i'm like how many damn grandmothers you got <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, from family members passing to um, oh, the, my favorite. I couldn't get a ride. That that yeah. that that's that's my favorite. That that's yeah. my favorite because you knew you knew where you had to be. You know, you have kids. They'll leave school and then they'll get stuck. You know, somewhere and talking about they couldn't get a ride. It's like, well, why did you leave school? Oh, well, I was hungry. I want to get something to eat. I said, Man, you should have planned better. You are trouble. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, that that's probably funny. That there's some funny. I should have wrote them all down over the years. We'd had a list of stuff to be. We could talk about that for an hour. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you talk about especially the and then not only that, not only you have to deal with with that the parents. Now I, I would just you had to deal with parents a little differently than I did uh, because the parents, you know, always hey when they got a little too high or they had too many questions. Well, hey, you could talk to Tommy Balaam, Adam Geist, the head coach, you know, and hey, I push it off to my head coach. But just the, the things that they had issues with, um, you, the parents who, you know, thought their kids were uh, all world talents, um, parents who want their kids to play other positions that they couldn't really play, right. um, parents who didn't like um, when you discipline the kids, you know. Well, they, um, they like you to have discipline, but just not with their kid. That's yeah. Fun. You know what I mean? Oh man, yeah. that kid! You had to spend that kid for skipping class. That's great. Oh wait, what are you doing to my son? He 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 skip. He didn't skip class. Uh, he 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 wasn't feeling good, and he went to the bathroom. And I'm like, hey, I ain't got time for that. He wasn't in class. You know, he didn't check in. He didn't do what it's supposed to be. So we always try to make him accountable a little bit like that. But yeah, you're right on the excuses now. Oh yeah, yeah. I had a um, I had a parent. I remember it was my first year at uh, Terry Parker, and I had a kid. Man, this kid was lazy. I mean, he wasn't very athletic, um, didn't have much talent. And if he did, he didn't show up because he was lazy, you know, and he he had he has had his mom come up to the school. And I guess I don't know the story he told her, but it was opposite from what was actually going on. And so I tried my best not to embarrass him in front of his mom because of like, you know, he's he's not telling the truth. But, you know, he he just he was so staunch about it. I said, well, OK, we're going to do this. Well, let's do it. So his mom said, well, uh, he's not playing and he's not getting any time. And he said, you guys are not letting him play, blah, blah, blah. I said, um, ma'am, uh, I, I hear what you're saying, but um, I called out a play. I can't remember the play I called, but the play goes to the left or to the right. It was a running play. And so I asked him, I said, hey, so when we call this play, what, what direction are we going, left or right? He had a 50-50 chance to get it right. And he could have just guessed. You know, if you came in humble, he could have just guessed it. And if he was wrong, I would have just said, yeah, but he got it wrong. And I said, ma'am, he doesn't even know where it goes. And then he had a 50 50 chance. He's not paying attention in practice. And she looked at him and I said, yo, he about to be in some trouble because he's lying to his mom. And she said, well, OK, well, then what is this nickname you guys have gave him? And so the nickname I gave him was Assback. And so, you know what that is. So yeah. she's like, I said, well, ma'am, when he tries to run onto the field, when we substituting, I said, hey, get your ass back on the bench. You're not playing. <laughs> She did not like that. His dad, though, his dad was laughing just like you laughing. His dad was in stitches because his dad already knew. His dad stood quiet the whole time because his dad already knew. And then my head coach, he told me after the meeting, he said, hey, Brandon, when you say stuff like that, you got to warn me because I was trying to laugh in the lady face. You got to warn me when you say stuff like that. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. That's so funny. We're, we're getting ready to go to St. Augustine. I got to say it's 08. We're undefeated. They're undefeated. It's the round of eight. And it's Thanksgiving weekend, so we practice Thanksgiving night. We run around, get our pregame done and everything. And I look up, and I'm coming off the field. 
And so all my co- all the kids are gone for the most part. And the coaches are going and I'm going off the field. And I, right as I get to the gate, I see this parent coming down the gate line. He's like, coach, coach, coach. And I looked over at him and he said, uh, Eddie going to get to play tomorrow. And I looked at the dad and I said, in the game? No. And just kept right on rolling. And that became like a, uh, uh, the coaches, uh, anybody, anybody said, so-and-so going to play. We all be like in the game. No. So right. that's, there's some funny things that have been said to the parents that they don't understand. I'm like, sir, the, the kid ain't played it down. He's only played my purple. We're, we're in the round of eight. And you want to know if your kid's going to get in the game. <laughs> right. So, oh yeah, right. man. The parents no. have changed a little bit over the years too. So. Yeah, no, no, they, they they they've changed a lot, man. They changed a lot. I had um had one kid, um, teacher came to me. Um, he was a you know junior varsity player, and I you know met with a lot of their teachers, and I said, any issues you have, you know, I'm the head coach, um, junior varsity, you know, just come tell me, you know, let me know, and I'll I'll pass along to my coach, you know, we'll deal with it that way, you know, and that way you kind of give them a little bit of a, a buffer to not get in trouble. You know, instead of them, you know, writing them up or suspending them right. or putting an ISSP, say, hey, come let us know, you know, and we'll deal with it. Take you know, we it. couldn't save them. Yeah, we couldn't save them all because some of them, you know, they were just hard headed. But, you know, for some we could, we did. So this particular kid, he was falling asleep in class and then he would be disrupting class, whatever, wearing a hoodie and just, you know, just not being productive. And so um, what we had him do, you know, we had him do bear crawls and we had him roll. So, hey, you, you bear crawl down, you roll back. And yeah, you got to do, I think he had to do like five to 700 yards or something like that. And so um, I remember I saw him, we were in practice and I watched him. I'm, he's on the side and I watched him, you know, in the corner of my eye, I'm watching him. He bear crawled down, then he rolled back. He bear crawled down, then he rolled back. Then he's beginning to bear crawl and then he just drops. And then he 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 he, he rolls over and he's, 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 he's on his back, it hands out like he's um, nailed to a cross. And I said, I said, oh, I said, hey, let's go check on him. So I go check on him and I said, hey, bring the trainers out. And, um, you know, he had just been overheated. So he took the helmet off. You know, he hadn't eaten any breakfast. He hadn't drunk any water or anything like that. And so we called his parents um, and his mom came and she was I'm to my mad. She she was upset because I think he came from Twin Lakes. And the first thing she said, well, they didn't do discipline like this at Twin Lakes. I said, well, ma'am, um, no disrespect, but this is high school, not middle school. Uh, it's a different standard here. And I said, your son was getting ready to be in trouble. He was going to be rolled up. Most likely he could have been suspended if he had to continue his course of action. So, man, we really saved him. I mean, and she just did not want to hear it. She came there instead of, you know, asking him what he's done. It's what have you done to my baby, right. which is hilarious to me. And then you realize why some of the kids are the way they are because their parents come. He's like, oh, well, I see where you get your attitude from. Right. Right. Like, you know, we're going to we're going to change everything because your son and whatnot. And like I always used to tell everybody, man, you know, when you run the programs and you got to do it, you, you, you got to do what you got to do. You got to you got to make sure everybody in the program's the same. Everybody's got rules. Everybody's got different things that's got to be done. But at the, at the end of the day, you got to make sure everybody's on the same page. And that's just the yeah. standard of how you're going to do things. So. But yeah, man, we could go on and on about like parents and some different situations, good and bad. Because I've had some good, good parents that would be like, you know, on the kids and everything like that, and right in their corner, yeah. knowing we're trying to help them. And then, then you get uh, helicopter parents that are hovering over every little thing, and that way the kids they can't communicate nowadays, anyways, because they don't know how to talk to people and look people in the eye and talk to them because all they want to do is text or direct message people and everything like that. So. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Face, I, I was telling um, I was talking to my mom last night, and we were talking about because I'm doing the show at three o'clock, and I'm uh, doing my buddy Sean Taylor. We're going to talk about how social media has killed relationships, right? And not just you know relationships between men and women. That's relation. That's just personal relationships. Period. Um, you know, like we're gonna, it's going to be soon to where human interaction and face to face is going to be a thing of the past. I said, give it about thirty years, and you know, it's going to be people who've never talked to. A a uh, person in person their entire lives that's that's going to happen that's that's the route we're going with yep. technology yep without with yep without a doubt and that's the problem and that's why we're our leaders and different things going on you know they don't live in the real world people don't live in the real world anymore you know that's what i always tell the kids here i'm like hey man this is the real world 
you got to work. You, you, that's why they don't like the weight room. Because in the weight room, you don't go in and get instant gratification. You know, you don't get that. You got to go yeah. in there and put in time and put in and put in and put in to get it. Where instead of pushing a button and bam, you know, I can Google that or I get that answer and so on and so forth. But I'm with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 30 years, so, I see, I put me about 90. So I'll yeah. take it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll take it. Oh, for sure, man. For sure. Um, yeah. It, it, and it, it's crazy. We talk about that instant gratification. Um, I've seen a thing where they talk about, you know, those who are successful. One of the common things that they um, share is delayed gratification. Right. You know, you know, putting off things, um, certain things today so you can gain tomorrow, you know. And, um, yeah, that, that's a lost thing because we live in a microwave society. Um, I talk about it all the time, how we're in the age of the diva where the kids today, like it, it's all the, the and it's, it's the way they've been conditioned. All they see is highlights. Right. So when they go to YouTube, you go to social media, all you see is the highlights of people's lives. You don't see the low lights. You don't see what it took for them to get there. And you don't see what they're currently doing to maintain said lifestyle. All they see is the glitz and the glamour and the thing and the good stuff about what people have. You know, they have no idea what people have put in to get where they are. Right. And they act like it's easy. You know, you're you're a you're a five foot eight point guard and I'm going to go play division one basketball. Blah blah blah. And, I, and, and I'm like, have you ever been to a division one basketball game? Have you stood next to those dudes on the on the court? Have you been to an NBA game where the point guard six nine and handling yeah. the ball like he's five one? I said, yeah. you got to get out and open up your eyes and everything. It's all great to dream. It's great to have goals and everything like that. But realistically, you got to understand, like everybody ain't there. LeBron James is LeBron James for a reason. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan. Tom Brady's Tom Brady for a reason. They just wake up one day and be able to throw the ball the way they do it because they put the yeah. work in. So. Yeah, yeah. You to all of those guys put the work in to from LeBron James, who couldn't shoot coming into the league. And uh before he was hurt, got hurt, he was shooting 40% from three. Yep. Um, Michael Jordan, same thing, not much of a shooter. His mid-range game is one of the greatest mid-range games ever in NBA history. You know, he became a great shooter as he went along. Same with Kobe Bryant. And then Tom Brady. Tom Brady worked his way into what he was. He it, like you gotta understand seven Super Bowls, it's ridiculous preparation hard work sacrificing blood sweat and tears it took to get to that point but you know all kids see is the super bowl rings right yeah and that and and that's the thing and that's the ones when you can get one that understands the the process of what it is and they have something back behind them whether it's an education behind them whether they got a good a good uh relationship with god behind them there's more to them than just playing football and that's what we always try to preach our kids. It's, it's a big world, man. You got to have things to do. You got to have other passions and other things that you love, not just, oh, I'm going to play football and play in the NFL. What are you going to do? With that don't work. What are you going to do? You blow your knee out. You know, what are you going to do? You know, so yeah. um, uh, it, it, there's a lot of things, but there's a lot of good kids, too, are just good high school football players. And that's all they're going to be. You know, yeah. and they enjoy it and that. And that we've gotten away from that. I believe there's a lot more get away from that everybody throws everything oh you got to get a scholarship you got to get a scholarship you got to you know it's it's high school football let's try to win games and be good teammates and learn about uh respect and respecting your opponent and picking people up you know and being a team member you know and i think we go yes. a long way in that oh man yeah i and i'm glad you said that because you know i always tell people if you want to see football in its purest form just watch the little leaguers yeah. Watch the little leaguers. Watch the little kids running around, the helmet barely fitting, and they wobbling all over the place. I say that's when it's in its purest form. I say, but the higher you go, the more business it becomes. You right. know, high school football used to be football in its purest form. Getting scholarships, you know, you get one, you get one, you don't, you don't. Now today, I mean, high school has become business, just like college and pro now. I mean, right. the politics that go into high school football is insane now. You know, the, even the star, the star rating system. When I was coaching, I'm thinking the star rating system is just based off of the kid, how he performed during the season, you know, um, you know, his build, you know, his stats, things right. like that. But I didn't know it was such politics that went into it. And then you got to go to camps and then the kids who can afford to go to certain camps, you know, they get more ratings on their star because they get more people to see him. And I was like, well, this rating system is, man, it's, it's, it's not showing me who the best players truly are. No, without a doubt. 
and there's been five stars that are not five stars and there's been three stars that are five stars you know it's not it's just something to rate people and you know like i tell everybody i said you should see the guys rating you and what they look like i said you you should see that guy's going to tell you if you're any good or not i mean come on man really you know it's just like yeah. i had a conversation with a parent about five six years ago who who's, he he didn't understand why his son wasn't getting recruited he's a running back i go he's a division one running back and i'm like no sir he's not and he goes how do you know i said because i've coached seven of them that's how i know yeah you know what i yeah. mean you know I, oh, yeah. I do this for a living i don't just do it because my son's in high school played varsity for two years and he's a division one guy this is what i do this is what i do for a living you know i've done it for a living yeah. i've had the guys at florida state at louisville at illinois playing running back in division one that's how i know you know and they don't like to hear that oh so. yeah 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 they, they they don't like to hear that I, I had a mom come to me after one of the games and I could just, I saw it on her. Like you could have fried an egg on her forehead. She was just upset. And so, um, and the kid, the, the kid at the time, he was a good kid, man. He was like a boy scout. He's one of those, you tell him to do something. Just, yes, sir. You can tell him run into a brick wall and he run into it. You know, that's, that's the kind of kid he was. And his mom had an issue. So her issue was, was that I wasn't letting him play multiple positions. Um, like, uh, cause he, he played quarterback for me. Now, he was, you know, uh, he was athletic, but, you know, he didn't throw the ball very, very well. You know, he, he threw the ball some. If, if it had to go over about 20 yards or so, you know, it, it was a it was a 80-20 a, a, a ball with 80% going to the cornerbacks because it was just not a good pass over 20 yards. But one thing he knew how to do was he knew, uh, he knew the offense, he knew how to run it, he knew how to call plays, and, you know, he was a runner. So we ran him majority of the time. We threw it a little bit. And, you know, he was just he, he was good for the offense. Now, I had another kid who could really throw, but he could also play. You know, he played corner. He played safety, kick return, part return. I mean, he could do it all, but he could also throw. And so that kid was going to play varsity, but he didn't want to play varsity. So he came back after our second game. And so, you know, I let him play as well. So they alternated that quarterback. And so the other kid, he played other positions. And my other guy, I would continue to let him play quarterback because, you know, he sacrificed for me. His mom was so upset. She was like. Well, why don't you let him play multiple positions like you do uh, the kids Donovan the, Donovan's plays? Why don't you let him play like that? I say, well, ma'am, I mean, we're talking apples to oranges here, man. I said, I said, well, first and foremost, he's never expressed interest in playing other positions. She's like, well, he wants to play other positions. I said, well, ma'am, he's never told me that. I said, if he had told me that, we could have let him play other positions. Um, he liked playing defensive end, and he turned out to be very good. You know, we allowed him to play defensive end for the last remaining games, along with quarterback. But she was just so upset that her son wasn't seen the same as another kid who could play almost every position except line. I said, ma'am, it's you were talking about two totally different players right. right now. Yeah, they don't understand that. They just see their baby and everything like that. That you're just doing their baby wrong. If the kid communicates and says, Coach, when am I playing quarterback? Can I play D B or outside linebacker or something? You'd be like, Oh yeah, well, heck yeah, I didn't know you did that. Let's try, you know, because you try. know how it is it especially J B, you get them like two weeks and then you start playing games. You know, it's not like yeah. you know, it's not like you had them all summer and you're getting ready. Most of them you don't. You might have some and so you know those kids. So yeah, I don't know. And I always tell parents, don't don't think they're not gonna be a success in ninth grade if they don't play much on the J V as a ninth grader. Because some kids yeah. develop late. I said, don't don't think they're not going to be any good or they shouldn't play because the ninth grade they didn't play any. No, some kids are just young ninth graders and the kids in front of them are better. I mean, it's it's just it's life, man. That's how it is. Yeah, that's 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 exactly how it is, man. Yeah, I've had a couple of kids, man, who do that their their freshman year at Parker they didn't play much, but by their senior years, yes. um, man, these kids were well oiled machines that you know they I got in, put into work, and they ended up getting scholarships. So yeah. it's not a, it's it's not about how you start, you know. It's about how you how finish. you finish. Yep, exactly. That's the thing, and and that's what I think the parents like. We get a bunch of these ninth grade parents now. They come out and then they play JV, and they and then at the varsity they don't get moved up, and next thing you know they're transferring to Mandarin. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, well, what are you doing? Well, you bring them up on the varsity. I'm like, what the hell, man? You know, give me a break. You give need to break. go. You don't care about nothing, but you you need to go. So crazy yeah they and that's one thing i don't think parents uh really understand is that just because your kid has splashed his talent just because you think your kid is capable of doing this he physically just may not be ready 
Right. I mean, you, you do know it's two different games. He just physically may not be ready. At any given time, he's going to come up against an 18-year-old that's 250 pounds, and he's 14 most time, 14, 15 years old. It, it, it's two totally different. Unless he's a man child, he's going to have an adjustment period right. of, of you know getting used to banging against bigger guys. And so just off that alone, his body physically maturing, he can have all the skill in the world. But if he's too light in the tail, especially at his position, he has to stay down. He has to develop. No, without a doubt. It's just they don't understand it. I mean, I don't. Whatever. I don't have to yeah. worry about it anymore, though. So, man, <laughs> hey, it must be nice, man. It must be nice. So, so where was your most exciting coaching stop? Like the one where you just you had the most fun? Oh no, Jackson, Jackson, in uh, what my first my first four years, I was a head coach at Deerfield Beach, which is in mm -hmm. South Florida. I grew up in South Florida, and that was a lot of fun because. I thought I knew something. I didn't know anything. And then <laughs> and then coming up here to Jackson and being able to have, you know, we got here, they had 14 straight losing seasons, had won eight games in the 90, and then in 98, you know, we won six my first year. And everybody thought, like, it was just crazy, you know. Um, we beat Rebolt for the first time like 17 years my first year. And uh, you thought, like, we won the Super Bowl. I'm, like, walking off the field like it's not a big deal. I'm, I expect to win. And it's like, yeah. you know, because I didn't know the ramifications and everything. And, and uh, you know, being being here for the 11, 12 years that I was here as the head coach uh, was really special because just the different uh, things that we did, not just on the field, but off the field, the classroom, put the kids in college, uh changing a lot of different lives and stuff has been uh was probably the greatest thing that we had going for us um you know as far as that and you know my staff together i i kept a good group of guys together as a staff for a lot of years probably seven years we went without any hardly any changeover um with yeah. anybody leaving or whatnot um which was really a positive thing for us and uh, just yeah. being involved in the community and being involved in the kids, that's uh, this place always, Jackson's always been special. And that's sort of why I came back two years ago to try to try to help it and get it back, get it back going. Yeah, man. It, and the, the impact that you leave on people, man, I grew up with my grandmother and, and grandfather being very influential people. You know, my grandfather, he worked in sanitations for 30 years. He was a superintendent for the city of Jacksonville. And so him doing that, man, it's so many people who know him, who know of me, who I don't even know, but he's impacted right. so many people. You know, you hear the name Robert Hook Sr. And people know who that man is. Same with my grandmother. You know, she was a, you know, she church lady, um, but she did so much for so many people. Right. You know, and she she pretty much she had so many skills where she sold this and made this and sat here and she had all kind of ways of making money and helping and helping other people as well. And so just off my grandparents alone, I've gained favor in the city because people knew my grandparents, mm. you know, and I think that that's a, I, that's how you really judge somebody's impact is, you know, the lives and the in, people they've impacted. You know, success is one thing. Making a lot of money is one thing. Achieving great things in your field is one thing. But I think the impact that you leave on this planet, especially the impact in people, I think is one of the greatest of all. Yeah, and I think that's what, you know, that's sort of the thing that in this area, too, uh, that we've always tried to do, you know, when you're fighting so many battles, um, just trying to get the kids to understand the importance of being in school every day and coming to practice every day. And then to, to watch that little scrawny ninth grader come in and and take care of his business in the in the academics and then and then so go up, go on and play, whether it, whatever it was, it you know, we wanted to, everybody wants the D1 stuff. But we had a lot of D2 kids do great and get degrees and now are doctors or they're lawyers. And, and uh, you know, it's it's once a month I'll get a text message or a message from somebody. I got one the other day. Uh, he called me three times just to, just to leave me three messages. And then I hadn't talked to the kid in, I guarantee you, 12 years. Uh, mm -hmm. young man that played for us here and, and uh, just well, he just wanted to reach out and he knew I was back and just wanted to say thank you and you know that sort of makes you feel good makes you want to do it you know and uh, you know yeah. um, I'm fortunate because my wife was involved in everything we do did here and my kids were raised basically here my son's coaches baseball and teaches here now and uh, so I was fortunate that they grow up in, in an environment where we were 
we were uh, servant leaders and trying to take care and make, make other people's lives better. And that's probably the whole nutshell of what I've done. Yeah. Um, I always say that, um, you know, um, I, I found my talent, you know, and I, I think I found my niche and found my lane, you know, and I want to take this and take it to, you know, incredible heights, you know, and, I'm you know, do things outside of this. You know, it's, it's so many things I want to put my hands in and, and, and do, you know, but at the end of the day, um, no matter what I achieve in media, in sports, in television, wherever, I always want to come back to Jacksonville and give back and, you know, by, you know, whether it's through, you know, organizations or whatever, give back. And also I said, once I probably hit about my fifties or so, and I've achieved all I want to achieve, you're going to find me on the sideline of one of the local high schools here coaching football. Like that's because I'm, I'm going to get back to it at some point. Three years was not enough. You know, I loved it so much. I hate that I can't do it now, um, but I'm definitely going to get back to it. So because just it's, it's, it's second to none, man, that impact that you get to have. Yeah, and that, you know, and that's the thing that I know uh, coming next fall when I'm retired and not working anymore. And, you know, I always miss, you know, I haven't coached football in a couple of years now. But I, I miss sort of the camaraderie with the kids and the special relationships that you built with certain kids, uh, the coaches, being in the locker room, being in the coaches' office before games or after games or just the, the, the grind. Because when you were in the grind, it's just what you did. When August rolled around till hopefully the beginning of December, it was going to be a grind and it was going to be fun. And, uh, man, it, it – um, the you know, they're not like it. Then it ended and then you get about a three week period off and you come back in January and you get back in the weight room and get going again. And that's what we did. And, and, uh, you know, I got to tell people like, what are you going to do? I'm like, well, I'm going to hang out and I'm going to enjoy myself and spend some time and do a little traveling. And if I got to go back and coach, I'm, I'm sure somebody will hire me. I think I can, I might be able to still coach O-line a little bit. It doesn't change that much, you know? So, yeah. uh, but I'm in a good place, man. I, I appreciate you having me on it, but I'm in a really good place. Uh, it's time to do something different for me. Oh yeah, yeah. It's um, it, I'm listening to um, this guy on YouTube, and he was talking about. He said, he said it's never too late, you know, to go in a different direction, change your vocation, or to um, experience different things. He said because you can do something for 30, 40 years, and then decide like, hey, you know what? I'm ready to go. In. You're not quite ready to just sit at home, but you're ready to go in a different direction and you know do something else. He said, and right for men. But man, it's never too late for you to change and to go into a different field and try something totally different. Sure. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah. Let's see, Miss uh, Murray Cannon Renee. She said, hey, man, Brandon, I miss your grands. Oh, yeah. 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 See, people know my grandparents, man. Uh, yeah, I miss them to death, man. I, I, that's the only thing about this is, man, I wish they were here to see this because I, I know they would be so proud of me. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yep, without yeah. a doubt. Uh, I, I know that feeling because my dad, he passed away right before uh, uh, I won my 100th game. And uh, it was it was sad not being there. Everybody was there. And then, you know, um, it's just been – it's it's when your parents aren't there. I'm fortunate my mom's 93. She, she's still around. So she gets up every once in a while to see us and we get down to see her and everything. But, yeah, my dad and uh, was always my biggest fan. So I think me going into coaching – was probably the greatest thing that I, I ever did to, for him. He loved sports, loved loved being around, coached us all through and everything. But, you know, had to pay the bills with six kids. And uh, I think he always wanted to coach and get into coaching. And so when I went that way, I, I think he I, he lived through me that way. So that was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that didn't have time for the games, man. He had to get it. Six kids, man. He, yeah. he had to get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And two, and he was able to he was able to work and take care of six kids. You know, I'm pretty sure hey, he did the best he could. But now oh, today, no, man, great. that's what I'm saying. He was a servant leader because we'd have I'd wake up in the morning. There'd be somebody sleeping on the couch. I didn't know that got thrown out of their house or was at work and and, and something happened. And they he had it. They had to come home and sleep on the couch with us. You know what I mean? And you're growing up. Yeah. You're seeing all these people that your your folks are entertaining. And we, my sister's friends move in for two or three weeks because they got thrown out of the house. So they were they were my both my parents were good servant leaders. So I, I think that's where I got I get my 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 uh, my servant my ability to serve people and help people from them. Oh yeah, that's yeah that and the same thing with me, man. I watch my um my mother, especially my grandparents, my mother, and even my dad. And you watch, you know, how they interact with people and what they do for people, and you know the joy that they got from helping other people. 
not just achieving things themselves, you know, making that impact and seeing that, you know, you've done something for someone that they probably couldn't do for themselves. And to see the sheer joy on their face, man, it's, it's second to none. Yeah, without a doubt. Yep. And that's why we do it, right? That's what we do. Yep, it. You got to give back. You, you got to give back. Yeah. Yeah. You got definitely got to give back. So, man, talk, so let's talk about, you know, before we get out of here, say about 45 minutes in. So before we get out of here, let's talk about, see, some of your favorite players to coach. Oh, man, I tell you what, um, you know, the obvious one, you know, Leon was a lot of fun just because he, he the, and this is what I try to tell people. Um, they talk about kids, that he, oh, man, that kid's a great player. Well, I, I classify a great player as somebody that makes the people around him better. You know, mm -hmm. Tom Brady's a great player. Because every, he, everywhere he goes, he wins, but everybody around him plays a little bit harder. Well, that's how Leon was. So anytime I watch a kid and they're like, oh, that kid's great, I always want to know what he's doing with his teammates. Is he the first one out? Does he run? Is he the first sprinter? Is he the, the guy that finishes first? Or he just lasts and jogs and that kind of stuff. So that I'm a little different with when they talk about, especially high school players that are great players. Um, I love coaching a kid named Charleston Jones. Charleston played linebacker and, and offensive line for us. Uh, he was just a work pale kid, ended up going and playing at Bethune, was a great kid. Vernon Edwards was another kid that, that, that I coached here that was a tremendous kid. Um, ended up coaching here, of course, coached with me some, but coached here, but, a, but, a, but another community guy and a kid that would just never bitched and moaned and cried. Um, just always came to work and, and that, but there's so many different kids, um, over the years, um, that, that I've coached a kid named Blake stone. Who's actually coaching offensive line at Gannon university, uh, up in, up in Philadelphia. But there's so many kids that you just, you just laugh when people bring up names and there's a story. There's a kid named Carnell Tarver that never played much for us. And, and he comes in the coach's office one day and he said, Coach, I, I'm not coming to practice tomorrow. And he got that old raspy voice. I go, well, Cornell, why, why are you not coming? I got to go to the doctor. I got to get an EGG. I said, you mean an EKG? He goes, yeah, that too, Coach. Like that. You know, there's just <laughs> funny stories and funny things about kids that, that, oh, that, that you just – that somebody will call like Khalif Fields calls me the other day. I thought about Khalif Fields in 10 years or, or uh, I run into Kevin Hardy's daughter. She goes to school here. Calvin played for me up till 2003. You know what I mean? And just mm -hmm. been a lot of good memories and a lot of good things uh, over the years. And I've just been fortunate that uh, I've been able to, to be at a place for a long time, like Jackson, the five or six years at Atlantic coast that I was, that I was being able to make an impact and do things for kids and people. Yeah, man. Yeah. Man, Cause that, I can't that. get that all time favorite debate. Cause you know, my kicks is up there and George Stripling's up there and uh, mm -hmm. Jawan Mathis. Oh, yeah. And I could just name guys that for whatever Troy Pollard, like Troy Pollard, yeah. my brother died in Oh uh, six and uh, he was 50. He was 48. My brother, he died in 06 and I got the word when I was at school and I was in the gym and I just sat in the gym and, and the word spread through the hallway that my brother died. He's my older brother. And Troy Pollard just came in the gym and stood next to me and put his hand on my shoulder for like 10 minutes. Didn't say a word and just put his yeah. hand on my shoulder and stood next to me for like 10 minutes. You know, that's something I remember like personally, like something yeah. like a kid would do that. Not because he didn't know what to say to me. And uh, mm -hmm. that that was special for me and him and I have a tremendous relationship. He just had a baby in December. So, um, you know, so I, it, it's cool to see my my kids be dads and doing some great things. So that's what that's what you're doing, man. That's what we're doing. What's it, That's what yeah. it's about. Yes, that's exactly what it's about, man. Uh, anybody who had any questions about what it's like, especially coaching. I mean, just watch this and you get a great idea of what it's like, man. The, the joy you get, the impact you get. The kids you meet, you know, the parents, you know, um, even having to deal with people inside the school, you know, the, the the ups and the downs, the wins, the losses, the blood, the sweat and the tears. At the end of the day, man, it's just great being one of the guys, you know. Yeah. Just yeah. It's great being one of the guys. Yeah. It's just yeah. it's just great being able to help. You know, we lost some kids that for whatever reason chose not to go our path or went somewhere else or whatever. Yeah. But 
you know, we tried to run our program and do what we thought was in always the best interest of the team. It was always the best interest of the team. And I think if you coach and you always keep the best interest of the team, um, I think you're going to be fine. If you got to do it for the right reasons, and it's always about the kids, man. I don't care what anybody says. You go, somebody stays in it a long time. It's always about the kids. Yeah, it's always about the kids. So, what's next for Coach Sullivan? What what, what do you have on the horizon? What's next for you? What what you got cooking? Ah, uh, well, you know, about a month from now, I'm gonna step away and retire for good. I signed my papers, my uh, my exit papers last week. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of time. We're gonna do some travel now that this COVID stuff sort of going away a little bit and, you know, got vaccinated, be able to travel a little bit and uh, spend some time. And uh, I don't know. We'll see. Something comes yeah. up, something, something fun, something different. But, uh, you know, like I tell everybody, it's been a good run for me. Uh, I've met a lot of great people along the way. And, um, you know, it's just been a good, a bit, been, been, I've been, I've been embraced by this community, this Jackson community down here for over 20 years and it's a it's it's been really uh special it's been really special to me so oh man but but the, once again man thank you so much for joining me man this is i mean this is this is great man like at, when i started this i didn't imagine you know being able to get guys guys like you guys who i've known you know seemingly my entire football life and heard of you know you like almost like that ghost that legend you know until you <laughs> actually meet somebody you able to put a face to the name right into the the stats and the glamour that you see man you know it's it's it's, it's crazy man it's crazy man but i appreciate you for joining oh, me hey. hey i appreciate you having me on and uh wish you luck and anything else i can do don't don't be afraid to reach out yeah yes sir yes sir thank you so much man but y'all thank y'all for tuning in please make remember to like share and subscribe you see all my information at the bottom down there follow me on all social media Hey, hey, check me out. I'll be back again at 3 p.m. Got a uh, live to do. Hey, we're going to talk about relationships and how it's been killed by social media. So tune in for that, people. But until next time, oh, stay on, Coach. I'm going to take us off this live, so stay on for yeah. me. Okay. But until next time, my people, we'll talk to you later, man. Peace out.